Rick Stevereau. Hello, Andrew Moody. <laughs> you too. <did. laughs> well, thank you. And this is an amazing space. This is the Calvary Baptist Church. That's right. On Main, on Main Street in Toronto. Yeah. 72 Main. Yeah. Right? And this is beautiful. Uh, tell me, actually, about... Um, you were talking about some of the stained glass windows. Oh, um, well, that one at the very back of uh -huh. the uh, church above the balcony. Uh -huh. um, the minister here, uh, before World War II, uh, he uh, enlisted and became an army chaplain in World War II and went over to Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had this vision of building this building when he got back. And, uh, and he said, oh, wait a minute, I've got all this wreckage uh, from European cathedrals, uh, stained glass all littered all over the ground. Mm -hmm. he, <laughs> he put the uh, things in cardboard boxes and ship them back to <laughs> back to <laughs> Toronto, and um, that uh, the window at the very back of the church is made mm. up of all of these little bits and pieces of stained glass uh, from mm. uh, World War II in Europe. That's amazing. Uh, it's a sort of dedicated uh, memorial uh, yeah. window. It's amazing, also. But when you told me that story, I thought. I wonder if he ever worried that somebody from Europe would come to the church and go, hang on, <laughs> 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 <I'm a moment. laughs> that's ours. <laughs> that would be so funny. <laughs> You're like, oh, uh, no, it's, uh, no. Anyway. The reason that we're doing it in the church is that uh, when I was a uh, uh, young Turk mm -hmm. uh, studying theology at McMaster, uh, I was the uh, student assistant at this church to the same uh, ex-chaplain uh, uh, major, uh, Bob Snade. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, uh, so I was, uh, I felt my, that I was the opposition. That this was a fairly comfortable uh, suburban church, a beach church, and comfortably mm -hmm. uh, uh, off. And uh, the, uh, I felt that the minister uh, had uh, just uh, was trying to make his, uh, com his congregation too comfortable. Right. So whenever I got the chance to preach, which I did every couple of weeks, uh, mm -hmm. once in the morning and once at the evening service, mm -hmm. um, I would... Uh, feel the need to afflict the comfortable <laughs> as opposed to comfort the afflicted. Right, interesting. So, uh, and then we kind of turned up here from time to time over the ensuing years yeah. when I was busy being a playwright. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, finally, they uh, made me minister emeritus. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I went from student assistant to minister emeritus in one leap. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good career path. Yeah, That's pretty it, and it doesn't mean anything. I, they don't even give me a parking spot. There are no <laughs> perks involved. But I get hauled in to preach every so often or oh, conduct great. a funeral or a, a wedding. Mm -hmm. And do you, every now and again, do you, uh, aff you know, afflict, afflict the, the comfortable? The comfortable? <laughs> Do you still do that? I don't know. Maybe listening to me preach is enough of an affliction. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. That's not true. So let's, well, let's talk about um, your early life. First, let's talk about your, your parents. Um, my uh, father was a central Ontario farm boy mm -hmm. uh, from near Dalrymple. Uh, mm -hmm. It's close to Seabright. Yes. Which is close to Aurelia. Right, right. right. Uh, so my mother uh, was a Barbadian. She was a West Indian uh, immigrant who came to Canada in the 30s, mm -hmm. picked fruit, worked as a domestic, uh, mm -hmm. uh, eventually started training as a nurse, uh, found her way, she did her training in Aurelia, at right. Soldiers Memorial Hospital in Aurelia, and met my dad who was uh, in the hospital for tonsillitis. Right. Um, and uh, they, uh, uh, they got married, uh, and I came along shortly afterwards. I was born in Toronto, but they moved back to Aurelia. Mm -hmm. And um, then Dad went to war. 
Uh, yeah. He was a tank driver, got blown up a couple of times, mm -hmm. uh, but made it back. I remember, I was like five when, uh, when he came back from uh, the war. Mm -hmm. And um, we put a, we were living in an apartment above a, a on the top story of a house and uh, put a big picture uh, saying uh, on the on the balcony saying welcome home daddy and I oh. I remember uh, we had to go to London Ontario uh, because that's where his unit was demobilized right. okay. and I can remember the soldiers coming through the the lines of people waiting and some of them wounded and mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, uh, crutches and so on and my father uh, now my mom and dad didn't get along very well. Uh, they, they fought for most of their lives. Hmm. Um, uh, I wrote a play called Drift uh, hmm. uh, after my dad had died, but uh, my mother saw it. It was uh, um, done a couple, two or three times in a couple of, in, uh, in, I think it was done at Blythe, and it was hmm. done um, at the Globe Theatre first. Uh, mm -hmm. in Regina right. and in Winnipeg as well right. at theater, Prairie Theater Exchange. Right. And um, uh, she said that she was going to sue me. <laughs> 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 My mother was a feisty sort. <laughs> <laughs> she felt like too many family secrets were out in the open. I, uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, she right. didn't know where I got all that stuff. I think I had kind of uh, absorbed it through my pores uh, as uh, uh, so I thought I was making up this stuff yeah. it was basic it was the fastest play I ever wrote I yeah. you know I just I, I had a character who was a, a writer a mm -hmm. novelist and he was setting uh, out to write a story about his mother and the first lines of the play I think is it, did she drift or did she decide to ha live the life that she lived mm -hmm. uh, uh, and that was uh, uh, so I uh, so it was easy to write because I was the writer writing, and then she appears over the writer's shoulder and says, nah, "That didn't happen like that," you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, a lot of stuff that probably from your childhood just yeah. bubbled up even without you consciously being aware of it, yeah, and just made its way onto the page. Yeah. Do you write that like that a lot? Do you no. Know? Okay. No, usually um, I'm pretty careful about uh, seeing where I'm going in the in a right. and sometimes it's like pulling teeth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. as you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like laying yeah. brick sometimes too. Yeah. Now, you um, oh, and also too, I want to know about like what foods did you eat? Like what foods would she make at home? Were they different from Canadian oh, foods? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, that was one of the sources of, of contention in oh, really? my family. Um, Dad came back uh, from the army uh, not wanting to eat uh, anything to do with lamb. Hmm. My mother liked lamb. Every Christmas we would get a care parcel from uh, Barbados mm -hmm. with... Uh, you know, uh, guava cheese and uh, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes uh, uh, dr sort of dried flying fish and various things <laughs> like that. So we had, uh, I had this sort of neat uh, combination of very traditional central Ontario foods yes, with <laughs> meat and potatoes for right, sure, right. every meal. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, then these odd little things that would come our way every so often hmm. or visiting West Indians who uh, yeah. uh, uh, brought a whole f different flavor man. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And spicy too, I'm yeah. sure.